Hmm. Wow. Flight to Fido. I'm really standing in mission control, and that is very cool. Over. Whoa! <laughs> Hello, I am Maria. You probably heard me refer to myself as Flight when I was doing that very official and completely normal radio practice. Flight is short for Flight Director, which is my role on the LEGO Space Team. That means I oversee the Flight Operations Team. That includes everyone from our medical doctor to our flight dynamics officer that you heard me call Fido earlier. We use a lot of nicknames around here to ensure our communication is as quick and easy as possible. Being a flight director is amazing, but it comes with a lot of responsibility. I have to make decisions about equipment and the spacecraft that have a lot of serious impacts in terms of both time and money. But most importantly, many of the choices I make during a space flight are related to the lives and safety of our astronauts. It's a job that definitely requires great leadership skills. And I'm not one to brag, but I am the captain of my breakdance squad, so leadership is kind of my thing. You know NASA's full of great leaders, and I think now would be a great time to introduce you to one of them. Charlie Blackwell Thompson is NASA's first ever female launch director and will direct the Artemis One launch later this year. Our jobs focus on different points in the mission, but are really similar when it comes to overseeing large teams, doing lots of planning, and making really important decisions. But why am I going on and on? Charlie can tell you herself. Thanks, Maria. Hello, everyone. I'm Charlie Blackwell Thompson, and I'm the launch director for the Artemis One mission. I have an amazing job, and I get to work with a great team on all the aspects of the Artemis launch countdown. Our team monitors the ground systems, the rocket, and the spacecraft to ensure that they are go for launch. I was always interested in space when I was young. I remember watching the Apollo missions with my grade school classmates. And here we are now preparing for a return to the moon. And in doing so, ready to inspire a new generation of engineers and explorers, just as I was inspired as a child. When I was in school, I loved math. Numbers made sense to me. So I was drawn to math and science classes but I also enjoyed creative subjects like art, music, and creative writing. I think these helped me in engineering school and in my job day to day, because as you combine math and science with creative thinking, it helps you solve problems. My career started over 30 years ago here at Kennedy Space Center. With my new computer engineering degree, I started out working in payload software and avionics systems testing. Since each mission had different payloads, every flight was different. I was lucky enough to work on the International Space Station assembly elements, the Space Lab program, planetary missions, and the Hubble Space Telescope mission. The mission that deployed it and the return to service it over the years. I bet you have some pictures taken from Hubble in your science book. This incredible image from the Hubble Space Telescope shows how even one star can be incredibly beautiful and powerful as it impacts its surrounding environment. Since Hubble orbits above the Earth's atmosphere, it can give us a clear detailed view of this kind of awe-inspiring beauty and activity in the universe. For the past 31 years, the Hubble Space Telescope has changed the way we think of space and our place in the cosmos. Hubble has revealed an incredible diversity of stars and gives us pristine views into beautiful interstellar nebulas where new stars and their surrounding disks of dust and planets continue to form. Hubble remains in excellent technical health and is expected to continue its exploration of the universe for years to come. From 1993 to 2009, there were five astronaut servicing missions for repairs and upgrades of the telescope. These, along with an ongoing crew of attentive experts on the ground, are keeping the telescope today at the peak of its scientific capabilities. Hubble changed the way that we see our universe. I am proud to have been a part of the team that got to work on that incredible observatory. Over the years, I've had many different jobs, each one building upon the other, giving me an opportunity to grow and learn something new. 
It's similar to how your classes build upon each other. Ultimately, all those experience and classes led me to this amazing job as the Artemis Launch Director. The Launch Director is responsible for the overall planning and execution of Launch Countdown. Our team develops detailed procedures that configure the rocket and spacecraft for launch. There are timelines, checklists, and criteria for flight that all have to be prepared. And then there's training to make sure that we are ready to go when launch day is here. On launch day, part of my job is to make sure that each member of the launch control team has evaluated their system and is go or no go. Perhaps you have heard a launch day poll. This is the launch director performing the final poll for launch, verify no constraint and go for launch. Chief engineer, safety, weather, mission manager. And if everyone is ready, I get to say those magic words. We are go to launch Artemis One. After liftoff, I hand things over to a flight director like Maria. So like she said, we have similar roles, but in different phases of the mission. Speaking of missions, Maria, the word around the Space Center is you have a pretty exciting one in store. Any chance you can tell me about it? I sure can. But first, I want to thank you for giving us a better understanding of your job and what goes on in the control room on launch day. Oh yeah, and good luck on your planning for the Artemis One launch. Well, Charlie was right. This week's mission is super cool. Have you ever thought about what it would be like to ride in a car that could drive itself? How would it follow directions, avoid obstacles in the road, or park at your destination? Well, this week we're going to learn about what it's like to program a rover to do all those things and more on the moon or even another planet. In fact, the Perseverance rover that is currently on Mars is a great example. It might sound like a video game, but believe me, there's no joystick for driving a Mars rover. The only way a rover goes anywhere is after engineers here on the ground send computer commands overnight that tell it where to go. If the path is a tricky one, they can get very specific with a string of commands like drive forward 5 meters, then turn right 90 degrees, which will make the rover turn its wheels enough times to add up to 5 meters, then turn in place. But if it's a safer looking route, they can let the rover do its own thinking with commands like, see that rock over there? Find your way there safely. Then using two cameras like human eyes, the rover gets a 3D view of hazards like large rocks and steep slopes. Then after mapping any danger zones, it plans the safest route to avoid them. How do engineers know if the rover's made its drive successfully? The rover sends a postcard from its new location on Mars. Pretty awesome, isn't it? Well, now it's your turn to take the wheel. Your mission is to design an autonomous vehicle that the Artemis team could use on the moon. My friend Mindy is here to tell you all about it. Thanks for having me, Maria, and letting me talk about Operation Autopilot. This is a super exciting mission. I'm ready to get started with my own students. All right, kids, think about driving a remote controlled car. Seems easy when the vehicle is right in front of you and responds quickly to every turn. However, the distances at which NASA operates makes having direct control like that impossible. The distance from Earth to Mars, for example, can make a signal take around 14 minutes to reach a vehicle on Mars and another 14 minutes to get a return signal back on Earth. The surface of the moon and other planets also have a lot of rocks, sand, and other obstacles that can cause a vehicle to get damaged or stuck. NASA engineers use a variety of software tools to help vehicles navigate autonomously which means the vehicles navigate by themselves. All right, students, reflect on these questions. How can you create a vehicle that can move independently? Why does NASA need to have autonomous vehicles and tools when exploring places like the moon or Mars? Now it's time for you to become the flight director and take over flight operations for an autonomous vehicle. Design and create a vehicle that could drive on the lunar surface. Think about how you will navigate your vehicle from Earth. What type of sensors will be needed on your vehicle to control it autonomously? What type of motors will be needed to move the vehicle? Think about different ways you can control the movements of your vehicle. 
Will it use an ultrasonic sensor to keep it from running into things or use a different type of sensor? And if you don't have sensors and motors, don't worry. Just create a prototype of the vehicle. Design a model of what the actual vehicle will look like. Brainstorm and sketch out your ideas. Be sure to explain what task you are trying to complete with your tool. Build, test, and rebuild on your model. Don't be afraid to try different ideas. If it doesn't work, that's okay. You can try something new. Hopefully by now, you feel prepared to take on this mission. I can't wait to see all of the cool and creative autonomous vehicle designs from students around the world. How about you, Maria? Do you feel like you're ready for this week's mission? Oh, I'm ready, all right. I can't wait to get started. Thanks for walking us through it. And thanks to all of you for joining us on this adventure. Like Mindy said, we're super excited to see all your designs. So don't forget to submit your work on the LEGO Education Community or post on social media with hashtag build to launch. Your build could be featured in our next mission briefing. See you next week.